followers of Jesus. My father loved Jesus. As a little girl, I didn't understand why he was so often away from home. I remembered my mother and older brothers and sisters being sad and very afraid when the evil ones killed Jesus. That was an excerpt of Johanna reading by Lamplight, read by Patty Tool Bailey. We're going to talk about it tonight on The Ken Bailey Show. The Ken Bailey Show. That's right, it's The Ken Bailey Show. I'm Ken Bailey along with Patty Tool Bailey, and it's um, 8 o'clock in the Central Standard Time, and uh, we're going to be doing The Ken Bailey Show. Do you have any idea what we're doing tonight? <laughs> I do, yeah, as a matter of fact. Oh, please tell me so I'll know too. <laughs> do, you ever, um, do you ever have trouble going to sleep? I did the other night. Did you? Right. Well, you're not alone. Uh, we're going to talk tonight about, um, about insomnia, which um, affects a lot of folks. And, um, it, the, the, but specifically, there's an article in Neurology Today that a uh, a fellow named uh, Dan Hurley wrote back in July about uh, what he calls COVID somnia. So it's uh, because of COVID, a lot of folks are having an increased. Uh, it's increased because they're worrying about their jobs and uh, if they can ever go back to work again, yeah, that kind of thing. Sure, and worrying about their jobs, worrying about getting it, I guess, worrying about their families, worrying about the country, worrying about, you know, their home to hear all the news and. Uh, no. At home with the kids, trying to teach the kids. <laughs> yeah, and, that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. the whole thing about uh, now that I'm a teacher and I'm a, uh, we're uh, we're still in essence quarantined. You don't hear the word quarantine much anymore, but uh, we're we're sort of self quarantined. Um, so yeah, um, this in this article, Patty, they're they're telling us that um, uh, COVID somnia or insomnia itself. Uh, it it it, uh, it becomes chronic when it's um, you're not able to fall asleep within 30 minutes or more three times a week for more than three months. What happens is these folks get into bed, their brain kicks in. Boy, I know that one. Mm. They start worrying about those things we're talking about, like their job or uh, members of their families getting it, or just all all the things that uh, life presents. And you know, I guess when you're at work. Um, you're so focused on your work, and that that is an escape in a way. Uh, and also, it also gives you enough uh, money to be able to maintain, you know, pay the bills and and do all that. So suddenly, without work, um, for so many folks, it's um, it becomes something of a worry. And uh, so we're going to talk more about uh, uh, about insomnia, about COVID insomnia, but also we're going to talk about. Um, Something that that you've actually done that uh, may help. We're gonna we're gonna see that. So if you're if you're still awake out there, <laughs> and uh, if we haven't put you so maybe the show is the is the answer to uh, COVID insomnia. I don't know, but uh, anyway, we'll we'll be right back after this, and we'll we'll talk more about uh, about the subject. Are you missing your visits to the nail salon? Sure, you can do them, but the pampering and ease is just not the same, is it? Well, why not make it a little easier and pamper yourself with your own grip and tip to give you a hand, an extra hand. It holds your polish securely and is just something for yourself and your nails while you hold on during this time. Grip and Tip, helping you hold on. All right, we're back with the Ken Bailey Show with Patty Tool Bailey, and we're talking about sleep and the lack thereof. Yes. Well, you're talking about the COVID worries, but a lot of times I'd have trouble or would wake me up when I was working, and I would think of all the things I've got to do, mm. and and that that makes me alert, and I have trouble sleeping then. Yeah, just that anxiety. I mean, there's so many things that we can we can worry about, uh, or um, but but just laying there in bed. I think uh, now we do something that a lot of people say we're not supposed to do, and, mm-hmm. and that's go to sleep with the TV on. Uh, the great invention for you has been the sleep timer. I could I could sleep <laughs> with the thing on all night long, but. Um, with the sleep, um, a lot of times uh, TV shows, things like that, 
put us to sleep. Yeah, you've trained me uh, <laughs> in our married life to, to go to sleep with the TV on, and now I kind of, I kind of need it to go to sleep. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I don't care how it how the program ends anymore. I can just, <laughs> but yeah. if it's just dark and quiet, I don't know. For some reason, I I can't fall asleep. Yeah, black and whites is, tr- is the secret for me. Uh, you know, I can't watch the late night comedians and all that. I get too engaged. And uh, uh, but boy, uh, a black and white um, Perry Mason or a, or a, any kind of old film or something like that. Boy, that just puts me in a place where. I can really see out on uh, on something like that, but uh, yeah, I'm not. In fact, in my age now, um, I've got the opposite problem. I, uh, you know, <laughs> I saw a thing the other day that said um, when you're uh, when you're of a certain age, um, the way to the way to go to sleep in a chair is uh, sit down in a chair. <laughs> And you'll do that. that seems to work for you. It does work for me, and I'm just out. It's a, <laughs> it's a lovely way to, to take a little break uh, during the daytime. Now, I do get up, like so many of my friends, um, I do, I, you know, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of trouble going to sleep. But, boy, staying asleep is a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, in fact, I even did a little show called Up to Pee. Um, that uh, you can find on the internet, and because um, so many of my friends, we would uh, we, we would always uh, it's not around the water cooler because we can't handle that anymore. But <laughs> but we would be um, you'd have these little breaks in the middle of the night, so you, ha- you sleep came in little bunches, and um, so that's a that's another sleep challenging thing that happens. But uh, but yeah, for for so many, this insomnia thing is. Um, is a problem. In fact, um, because of that, and we were when we we're creating our, our audio books, and we've had so much fun doing, uh, taking a lot of our, our different uh, writings and different things that we uh, we're interested in and translating them into audio books. And you've done such a fantastic job of that. Thank you. And and one of those things is um, the book we've called uh, Johanna Reading by Lamplight, and uh, it's. Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, what that is? Well, basically, it's just readings of the words of Jesus. Yeah. They're not in context. It's just Matthew and Mark and the quotes from Jesus. And no context at all, just the words of Jesus. And we've done it in a... In a kind of a soft way, right. that listening to scripture can be the last thing you hear as you go to sleep. Yeah, I uh, had the opportunity a couple of years back with our with our oldest granddaughter Emily, and she and I worked on um, on putting together um, just the words of Jesus, uh, with, just as you described, without any kind of context. It doesn't say where he was when he said it doesn't talk about the the situation he was in when he said it just we thought just the words of jesus would that um what would that be like would that would that be so non sequitur that it was confusing or would it just kind of wash over you in a way and then you've taken that and by um by putting the soothing way that you've um you've recorded it in our in our audio book we're thinking that uh, it's going to be a, a tool that people can use to um, to help them go to sleep. But just the idea of when you're you're laying there in bed and you've got your phone on or your tablet on or, or however you listen to audiobooks um, and be able to lay there quietly and instead of being anxious and you know he said we shouldn't be anxious for anything. Instead of being anxious about tomorrow, you just let the, the in that in that quiet time, let the words of Jesus wash over you. We we think that just has to be something good. You heard a little bit from the audio book before the show started. Now let's hear a little more of Patty and Johanna reading by lamplight. Allow it now, for this is the fitting way for us to fulfill all righteousness. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Again it is written, 
you shall not test the Lord your God. Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and you shall serve him only. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come after me, and I will make you fishers for men. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people reproach you, persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its flavor, with what will it be salted? It is then good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill can't be hidden. Neither do you light a lamp and put it under a measuring basket, but on a stand, and it shines to all who are in the house. Even so, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. For most certainly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not even one smallest letter or one tiny pen stroke shall in any way pass away from the law until all things are accomplished. Whoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and teach others to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, there is no way you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, Johanna is not the only book we're offering at the KenBailyShow.com on our website. We have other audiobooks there. If you'll go there and take a look, uh, any of them uh, can be uh, enjoyed, uh, whether before bed or, or during the day. There's Aflux Sunday School, there's Dancing with Baptist, and Oh Goody, Hope is Lost for the Kids. Here's a, here's a little excerpt from each one of them. Chapter 1. The Iron Triangle, South Vietnam, February 22, 1967. Chaplain First Lieutenant Terence L. Chap Bonner was Greg's second black friend. Chap held the bloody baby. Greg tied a clean shoestring around the baby's umbilical cord. He had an extra pair because the supply sergeant had gotten combat boot shoestrings in instead of the three O silk sutures Greg had ordered. Greg's experience cut the cord with the Metzenbaum scissors he wore on a chain next to his dog tags. After cutting the cord, Greg's attention switched back to the still-squatting, still-shivering 14-year-old in front of him. Greg dealt with the afterbirth. The mother of the moment finally laid back in the ground cover that surrounded them. She did not look at the baby in Chap's arms. The tiny infant's little fingers got tangled in the chain around Chap's neck. On the chain was a wooden cross that some of the village kids had carved as a gift for his birthday. Now there was another birthday. Chap took the cross from around his neck with his left hand while he held the little guy in his right. 
As the new mother lay on her post-op bed of greenery, Greg bandaged the cut along her right temple. He marveled at how throughout the birth, like most Vietnamese mothers, she never made a sound. It was considered rude to make any noise in public. Greg had not been on call that day. Chap had heard of a shrine he had wanted to see, and Greg wanted to be anywhere but the field operating tent. The last nineteen days had been pure hell. The people who made up the names call it Operation Cedar Falls. The intended objective was to drive Viet Cong forces from the Iron Triangle, a sixty-square-mile area between the Saigon River and Route 13, a highway that stretched from Ho Chi Minh City near the Cambodian border. Nearly 16,000 American troops and 14,000 soldiers of the South Vietnamese Army had moved into the Iron Triangle. Seventy-two Americans were killed, many of them shot by snipers emerging from concealed tunnels. 720 Viet Cong were killed. It was easy for many to think, only 72 Americans, but five of those 72 had died on Greg's operating table. Tens of tens had been saved, but five boys died. Chap had prayed over the injured and the dead. Chap prayed while Greg and the surgeons reached deep into young abdomens invaded by bullets and shards of sharpened bamboo. After nineteen days of that, Greg and Chap needed the break. The two walked and hitchhiked for hours and never found the shrine. It was Chap who had first spotted the young girl on the side of the road, doubled over and bleeding from her forehead. Chap knelt and prayed for her. Moving the injured and pregnant girl off of the dangerous shoulder happened just in time. A sputtering convoy kicked up shells, rocks, and dust, and left tracks over the hula hoop sized wet ground where the young mother's water had broken. Chap took off his shirt and laid it on the ground next to the new mother. He bent over and placed the tiny one on it. The mother looked away. Many Vietnamese believed that if you show attention to a baby, it alerts evil spirits and they will come to kill the baby. Greg was the first to hear the next trucks. He and Chap ducked into the grass alongside the young Asian Madonna and child. As soon as the last Olive dipped in mud truck roared by. The barrel of an assault rifle nudged through the leaves of a dark green bush. Next, an RPK machine gun pushed through a neighboring bush. One was pointed at Greg and the other at Chap's chest, where the cross had been moments earlier. The chaplain and the young surgical tech froze as a mismatched uniformed teenager and a head-bandaged preteen followed their weapons out of the bushes. Chapter 1. Back Bedroom Baptist Lloyd Boyd, personal preacher. Turn that down! Can't you see I'm on the phone? It was a she. Well, you could if you ever looked up from that television. It was a she with good projection. What's a personal preacher, anyhow? Are you talking to me? Are you Lloyd Boyd? Yes. Then I'm talking to you. I call myself a personal preacher because that's what I feel God called me to be. Give me that remote! I waited. Do you live alone? Yes. Lucky. You heard me. Watch your show. Go on, preacher. I was standing soaked up in the shower when the question came to me, with so many personal trainers and personal shoppers, why not a personal preacher? Well, we need a preacher. Come to 1326 Serene Street, Sunday, 9 a.m. sharp. And you are... Getting mad about a minute. Give me that remote. A beat, and I was talking to a dial tone. Brake slammed as something raced across the pavement just ahead of my front bumper. It was the world's most blessed dog. I had been so focused on finding Serene Street, I had missed the jaywalking terrier by mere inches. I pulled up to the curb to catch my breath. The smell of spicy barbecue, well on its way to becoming someone's Sunday feast, filled the air of this modest little neighborhood. I was hoping the mouth-watering aroma was drifting from my lady caller's house. A boy on a bicycle coming my way entered my rearview mirror. Uh, excuse me, do you know where Serene Street is? Yep. And he pedaled right past me. 
I had seven minutes to find the house. I pulled from the curb and followed the bicycle. Without looking back at the next corner, he pointed out his right hand and pointed. With three minutes to spare, I rushed up the cracked cement walk to a well-kept frame cottage. A pink post-it note on the door frame read, Not quietly. Do not ring bell. I knew immediately this had to be the house. I knocked as softly as I could, stood there, buffed my wingtip shoes on the back of each pant leg, stood there, started to knock harder when the door swung open. Looking down at me through the torn screen door, she was a giant redwood with eyes. You aren't black. Is that a problem? She didn't answer. She just turned and walked deeper into the house. After a moment, I opened the screen door and followed. By the time I reached her living room, she was on all fours, reaching under a console television. I was glad I wasn't trying to watch football. Her backfield covered the entire 27-inch zenith. I got some things under here you're going to need. Can I help you with that? She told me she could get it herself, and presently pulled out an old coke tray with a Bible, a tin pie plate, and what looked like a piece of blue construction paper folded in two. Oh, I, I have a Bible, I boasted. That's not for you. That's my Bible, she scolded. This is for you. She handed me the empty pie plate and the paper. I unfolded the paper and saw it was an old order of worship. Before I could ask anything, she was off to another room. As I started to follow, she returned to fill the doorway with herself and the largest boombox I had ever seen. And she smiled for the first time. I prayed. I'm Lloyd Boyd, personal preacher. I'm Sister Selma. It's very nice to meet you. Sit down for a minute. We sat on her comfortable sofa, and she told me about Grant. She gritted her teeth and cried and laughed. I listened and tried to follow. At first, I thought Grant was her dead husband. Next, I thought he might have been a pet. She kept mentioning the word dog. Suddenly, I realized he was in the back bedroom and very much alive. Selma and Grant had been together for 13 years. They had had everything two people could have together except a wedding. Before I could tell her I wasn't licensed to perform a wedding ceremony, she started telling me about Grant and church. Grant had been a very faithful churchgoer for years. In fact, they met in church. But one Sunday morning, nine years ago, Selma put on her hat, grabbed her Bible, stepped onto the front porch, and there was Grant. He was sitting on the front porch in his Saturday night pants and his Sunday after church t-shirt. Grant, you're going to make me late for services, she told him. No, I'm not, Grant said, and he handed her the car keys. He hadn't stepped foot in a church since, she told me. I asked her the kinds of things one would in that situation. Was he mad? Hurt, embarrassed, guilty, jealous, angry, bored? She said he was none of those things. Sister Selma said when she asked why he wasn't going, he simply replied, I got it. After she used the obviously empty threat, You're going to get it. She finally asked seriously, What do you mean? In a time not then, but now. In a place not here, but there. There lived a shepherd named Goody who loved his sheep a lot. Now Goody the shepherd had a lot of sheep. More sheep than all the seats in the world's biggest football stadium. More sheep than all the makeup on your mother's dresser. More sheep than all the freckles on my friend Ashley's face. Goody the shepherd had a lot of sheep. But even though Goody had so many sheep, he knew each one was special and he gave each sheep their own special name. Come on, little Genesis. Exodus. Leviticus. Hannah. Montana. Idaho. Each evening, just before bedtime, Goody would gather all the sheep around him and thank God for his little loves. And God bless Wally, Willie, 
Wooly. Wiley. Wally. You already said that. Oh, sorry. Lovey. Faith. Charity. Wait a minute. Where's Hope? Here, Hope. 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 Goody the shepherd went to each part of the flock calling for Hope. And all the sheep looked for their little friend. But no one found Hope. Oh, Goody! Hope is lost! Just then, dark storm clouds moved across the sky. Poor little Hope was lost and alone, and now she was going to be in a terrible thunderstorm. Now Goody gathered all his little sheep together. Even though Goody had so many sheep and all but little Hope were safe and sound, Goody couldn't stop looking until he had Hope safely back home. With the lightning lighting his path, Goody trudged across the muddy pasture looking for Hope. In the dark, he came to the edge of a jagged cliff. Below the cliff, were bunches of thorny bushes. Oh, get away, you're sticking me. Hey, don't you know it's not polite to point? Just as he was turning to go, Goody thought he heard something coming from the thorny bushes. Goody listened harder, but all he could hear was the thorny bushes. Ow! Ow! Oh, that hurts! About to give Ow! up for a second time, Goody heard it again. The next flash of lightning lasted long enough for Goody to see something struggling against the branches of the thorny bushes. It was Hope! Excitedly and without worrying about getting stuck by the thorny bushes, Goody the shepherd reached in and pulled out little Hope. With Hope in his strong arms, Goody thanked God for little Hope and then took her back to the flock where she belonged. When they got back, all the flock cheered. Oh, goody, you found hope. As the thunder clouds turned to cotton clouds, everybody celebrated and thanked God for the return of hope. It was a beautiful night in the pasture. Did you know that just like Goody the shepherd loves each of his sheep, God loves each of us. And just like Goody, God won't rest until we are safe in His love. And just like in our story with God, hope is never lost. And if you'd like your own copy of the audiobook of Johanna Reading by Lamplight, go to thekenbaileyshow.com and, uh, and click on the... Um, the, the image that has the cover of the audiobook on it, and you can get your own copy. And, and let us hear from you, too. We'd love to hear um, how, how, what kind of experience you had. And, and share with us your experiences with uh, insomnia, even COVID-somnia. We, we like to hear from our listeners about everything that's going on in our lives. We take time to pray uh, for those that we hear from, so, uh, so please do that. We're going to be back next week. Um, I kind of teased it earlier, Patty, but we're going to be back next week with uh, some really great news uh, that includes our sponsors, but it's also about how our listeners and folks that we, uh, that are especially folks that are have falling a little short on cash this year for Christmas. I can uh, do some Christmas cash. <laughs> yeah, lots of us can. <laughs> and uh, and thanks to our sponsors and, and a couple of great things that are happening through One Spire Entertainment, uh, we're going to be able to offer uh, some ways, uh, some really fun ways for uh, for you guys to, to make some Christmas cash and uh, and have a good time doing it and, and feel really good about, uh, about helping folks out uh, as you're – as you earn uh, your Christmas cash. So, uh, so tune in next week. We'll hear about um, a, a great way, a new opportunity out there to make some Christmas cash. And, uh, and we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back with you and look forward to it. Thanks, Patty, for a great show. Thank you. Take care, guys.